Tonight on Furniture Film Classics. Welcome to Furniture to Go. I'm this one. And I'm that one. And today we're at Howard Hill, very large, unfinished furniture store in Pensalka, New Jersey. Well, the furniture's unfinished. That's true. Now, you might ask, why unfinished furniture? Well, if you don't want to strip something, but you do want to finish it, it's an ideal first project. Of course, there's no goopiness. Yes. <laughs> you can find all kinds of furniture You here. can find cherry, you can find pine, you can find poplar, oak, ash. And we're here to find projects for two shows. Two shows, so let's go now. Find anything? Stack no, tables. Nothing yet. Some oak and pine. pine. Hey, here's a nice piece. A sofa or console table made of oak. Let's put it down on the floor, see what it looks like. Kind of a Queen Anne style with the pad foot. And this is white oak. It's not red oak. It's a lot lighter in color. You know what you could do? Your fabulous and famous poor film. Oh, I've made that famous all across the country. Home shows near you, folks. And you notice the legs are not oak, They're they are ash. ash which means they're going to stain differently. So we can't do a pour fill on them. No. And they're bolted in, so this will come in a box. Well, let's include this on the order, and we'll go find something else. You go to You way. seek, I, and I I'll find over here. Seek, and ye shall find. Oh, I can't believe it's not a real butter churn. <laughs> but look here. We have a pine nightstand, and it's very reasonably priced, only reduced to $68. One's not enough. Let's do two. I'll get two just like it. And Joe will do one in a stain, and I'll do one with a painted finish. Then you can see all the different things you can do to the same piece of furniture. It's nice and cheap, and we can experiment on it. I wonder what Joe's doing. This is a hall rack. It's pine. The legs, however, the spindled legs here, are poplar. And, uh... I think we can do a nice finish with this using some aniline stains or aniline dyes that we haven't used before and some black. You've seen a lot of furniture. It's like colonial style. It has uh, like a honey or, or a yellow color and black elements to it. I think this will be nice for that. So, uh, and you can put your hats on it after it's finished and see it in your, uh, in your little hallway. So let's go find Ed and try and gather all this stuff up. Ah, we meet again. Are you still here? Look, an oak roll top. A solid nice. oak. Patterned after an old-styled roll-top desk. It's now, got these pretty drawers in it. You can put anything you want in here. Eggs. <laughs> the price tag says about $1,000. If you bought it in a department store, already finished, more than twice that. Oh, really. at least that. And you know, people buy something like this. They put a stain on it and a poly. We're going to show you how to do an old-world stain, repeated stains, and varnish. It's going to be a lovely, ambitious project. Let's go settle up, load up the truck. And, and I saw some tchotchkes over here. Hey, these will be good to do at the end of the show. I think so. Oh, but you know what? what? I think we've got too much furniture here for one show. So we'll do some in one show, some in another show. Good. Oh, you know, they forgot our hall rack. I'll see you back at the shop. Hey, mister. Can we have our hall rack? Hey, mister. mister. Can we have our Oh, who's that little old nightstand then? That's my grandfather's nightstand. Oh, that's not your grandfather's nightstand. I've seen your grandfather's nightstand. Well, that's my other grandfather's nightstand. Oh. It's very clean then. Well, first we'd like to show you how different two nightstands can be. Just like us. Both nightstands are made of knotty pine. Yeah, like you said, just like us. And while I'm going to be uh, doing mine in an old world finish. The old world traditional finish. I'll be applying different colors for a symphonic, yet cacophonous, painted finish as found in a kid's room. I thank you. In a kid's room because all America knows you are but a child. I do retain my childlike sense of wonder, don't you? And know? that makes us all special. And I'm the guy in the Barney <laughs> costume. <laughs> That's why it snakes in there. Well, there's another guy in it with me. Okay, I'm taking these drawers out. Oh, not me. Why Just am I going to do that? Both stands, as we said, are knotty pine, and whether you're going to paint like Ed's going to do or whether you're going to put an opaque stain on like I'm going to do, you want to shellac the piece before because you want to seal the wood. And yes. we've done, as we've said before, with fa factory edges, they're sometimes sharp. So we've broken all the edges with some sandpaper. We got the spit coat of shellac, and we apply the spit coat, you know, to knotty the pine. Fronts, uh, and the carcass. Stains unevenly. <laughs> so if you give it a spit coat of shellac beforehand, You'll get a lot more even. I'm going to use this one. <laughs> hey, but you got to make the drawer bigger to use that one. Oh, 
I like to turn the knob. I like to thank the, the Academy. Oh, boy. Henny Youngman, 1907. The Orpheum. Okay, the shellac has dried, and I sanded with some 400 paper. So it feels nice and smooth now. And I tack ragged it already, except for that little bit I just sanded now, but this is TV. Okay, so it's nice and smooth, and I'm gonna make a opaque stain, an opaque stain. And I've used some burnt sienna, some raw sienna, and some flat white wall paint, some mineral spirits. I got some varnish over here, it's a furniture varnish. And it gets, you get this. Looks like uh, a nice chocolate icing of some sort. But I'm gonna add a little more white to it. You don't have to be neat if you got a workshop. See? And here's some more varnish. Oh, yeah. And now, a little bit of Japan dryer. There you go. Now we mix all this together. And what do we have? Looks like the ice cream after it's all melted in the bowl. I'm gonna paint this on and then wipe it off. It's gonna lay on top of the wood rather than penetrate. Put the other glove on. What you do is take the rag, just like this, and you wipe off the bulk of it. Before that, wait, I want to get the excess paint out of this brush. Let's drag it across and see what that does. Oh, yeah. We can wipe off a little bit more if you want. And go right to the next drawer. Now, I'm not doing a glaze like Joe did. Glaze is more like for a donut. Donuts. I'm doing more like a frosting. What I'm doing is laying on a primer. When you want to do a color, you got to lay down a white or black foundation so you have something opaque to color upon. So you can use rollers or you can use a brush like I'm doing to spread your primer. When your primer's dry, get your colors prepared and use clean rollers, or in this case, brushes. I suggest a semi-gloss paint. And it has a nice shine, too. It's easy to clean. Now, my gut, Ed Feldman's gut, tells me that there should be a variety of primary colors. Even those of you with outmoded, gender-specific colors in mind should be satisfied even before the babies are born, are born, even if you don't have the amnio or anything. Besides, when they're 13, they're all going to paint it black or paisley, and they're going to have a tray with the nose rings on the top. So don't even worry. Green, red, yellow, a blue. If you want to, you can use a roller. I'm going to do these sides. You're going to have to call me later and tell me if I got all the edges, because I can't see them, because I'm on TV. I got it. Now I go to the blue. Oh, it's just like an infomercial. And now I'll do the blue. <laughs> and now for the final, I will use the roller. And we've mixed a little black and a little white and a tiny little bit of blue for the carcass, as you can see. And we'll just paint the top here. The moving canvas. Oh, the roller for the edge, always a nice touch. The opaque stain is dry, and now I'm shellacking. After the shellac is dry, remember this is a spit coat, I will sand the spit coat down with a 400 paper and then varnish. And that'll be over. Oh, me again. You know, I like to move the knob around 
on the brush instead. Now, actually, I'm painting all the knobs the gray color, same as the carcass, and I put the screws from the knobs back on the knobs so I have a lovely little handle with which to paint. And in that way, the colors will stand out that much brighter because I'll have the little gray knobs affixed to the front. Why, it's the warbling of the little gray knob bird. So here's a look for the young and the young at heart. I love it. It's like a box of Crayolas. You know what? I like yours better, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. That looks like in this, Bub this... Bubby and Zadie's room. Well, this needs some dark drab walnut paneling <laughs> and lots of somber evenings. But it's a, it's a look. It's Where's not... the TV guide, Margaret? I uh, can't see. I got the lights on in the room still dark. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a kiss. Uh, we're coming from way over there. Apparently, <laughs> we're, we're moving around this Now, show. this is called a sofa or console table. And it's just the right height for putting behind the couch so you can have the coffee table in the front. And the console <laughs> behind. Why just clutter up one table when you could be surrounded by your mess? And instead of just putting on your traditional walnut stain in the poly, which I hate, I hate oh, it. Oh, you hate everything. Yet I like you. Oh. Now, we've taken the legs off of this console table, so it's kind of like an exploded view. Well, the, tab the legs are ash, and this is uh, yeah. oak. And what we're going to do is going to be different. It's not going to affect the ash like it's going to affect the white oak. What and what we're going to do is we're going to chemically stain with this crock. Oh, with this crock. Well, not crud. with the crock, but with the crud that's in the crock. And what it is, it's a stain made from vinegar and water, quart of vinegar, quart of water, and all the rusty iron we could find. We threw it in there, let it sit, and now we're ready to strain it. It looks and like the revenuers are hot on we our have, trail. We have a strainer, and Ed will pour it, and it looks like a swamp cooler. Well, that's Snapple's interested in it. They're going to call, call it Pond Scum Supreme. That's enough. Okay. Now, if you... Drink this, you'll if have you drink enough this, you'll iron. have enough iron for the next millennia, you know that? Yeah, it's about the same as taking a bite out of a battleship. Now, why is it going to work on oak? Well, because this reacts with the tannin and the oak, and it will turn it a black color. And what we're going to do to this table top is a pour fill, a decorative pour fill with a black base and white pores, little white eyes looking at you. Let's throw this right down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the first thing you want to do, because this, this has been sanded, smoothly you want to open up the pores of the wood because that's what you're going to fill and you want this to enter so you're using a wire brush wire brush because it works now you scrub now if you can get in tight on this mr cameraman you can see all these pores opening up Now, if you saw a microscopic cross-section of oak, you would see that the crevices or the grain goes very deep. I feel like the flight attendant. The exits are in the rear. In the event of a water landing, I can be used as a flotation device, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Oh, if yes, you only... if you haven't seen us live, you haven't oh, seen anything. Oh, God, we do this live all across this great land of ours. But this is a big piece. Oh, wow. Now all the pores are open. They're all open. They're looking at me. Now we're going to paint with the pond scum. Get and the I, brush. And we'll you use can the use brush. a rag. Now watch. <sighs> Even I. It changes. Impressed. It ages you much as you age when you watch our show. To go. Now, if you dilute this with water, you can moderate the amount of change. And you can get a silvery gray color. All the way to a deep black. But this is going to go to black. Let's go to black now. You come back and you'll say, ah, no. It. no. The change she is complete. The wood's black, and we've sealed it with some shellac. It's black, except for these few white lines, which is... Different boards. Different boards, and they didn't have as much tannin in it, but I love that color. Now, I remember the legs. Thing. They're going to be painted a same, the same tan color that we're going to fill the pores at the top with. Now you see this? This is plaster... From Paris. From Paris that I've yes. mixed a dry pigment with, and it'll be a little darker when I... Now, you want to mix just small batches of this. When you're doing a table that's this size, you don't want to mix enough to do the whole table because... Because by the time the first part harden. is dry, the last part so will be hard. put a little bit of that in there. Don't forget the gloves or your hands will uh, uh, look the color of the stuff. Is this your first visit? Oh! <laughs> little now. something we like to call the doctor sketch. See this? Oh, it's going to look <laughs> interesting. You want it the consistency of marshmallow fluff, remember. Which is the perfect food. World's perfect food, exactly. 
Can I have a little more of that? Oh, okay. Certainly. Let me get, let me get and of course, you could dip the cutlet right in. A little batter. Here, I'll hold the, the high class plastic bowl. Well, you know, we bowl. have a big budget here, so we got plastic bowls. We wanted ceramic with Georgia O'Keeffe stuff on the side, but they wouldn't let you us. You got to get it the right consistency. Mm hmm. Now we got it. Now, a little more water. A little more chocolate sauce. A little sauce. more water. A little more water. A little more gauze. More gauze. More gauze. And two hot boiled eggs. Edith, I love you. Nichols and May, 53. Great, great okay. album. Now we're ready to go. Look, you got some on Mustard me. Mustard all over the pretzel. Mm hmm. There we go. Now, in rubbing in circles. I'm going to go, I'm going to start right up in this corner here. Okay? Now, uh -huh. see that there? It doesn't come off here. Eh? It doesn't. You're going to put it on here and you're going to rub. Rubbing hard in circles all day. That was my second marriage. Go ahead. You sure you like this color now? Oh, I love it. Watch. Can I borrow the towel? Wait, I'm not done with this yet. Mm -hmm. I have to use this. He's so concerned whenever he gets a little bit of stuff on his hand. I just have this thing. I have to know exactly what time it is, too. It's like David and Lisa over here. You do little, little spots at a time. And then you're rubbing across the grain. Some people do this with paint, and they call it the pickled effect. Some people rub me across the grain. That ain't right. Okay. Just rub. Okay, we're going to sand. The fill is done. This whole table is sand. I'm using a 400 sandpaper to just get the last of the residue off. After I filled, I went in those circles. I just took a wet rag and I went across the grain. And that removed most of the plaster and the pigment fill. While I have been painting the leg with the same, in my opinion, god-awful yellow that's now in the pores of the tabletop. Yes, it is. And now we're just going to wipe off like this, the dust. Oh, well, the tabletop looks nice. These legs look like a big hot dog drenched in gold. Yeah, but it'll look good afterwards. When it's on, it'll mimic the color of the table. Tack rag. Tack rag. Tack rag. Now, now the brushing lacquer will give it its final sheen. Or I'm putting... its final estevez, depending on who you like. You're going to keep up with that. Hey, I'm going to... I'm going not to... until they return my calls, anyway. Put this on with a brush. Do that edge first. Now, the good thing about a lacquer is you can do it all in one step. Let it dry. Then you could buff it down with some steel wool. Notice how I'm doing the over the over the table brush stroke because this is TV. And you don't know what you're doing because you can't get around that side. But I think I got all the spots. Now I'm going to lay it on here. And nice long strokes to reveal. To reveal all of the pores that you have filled decoratively with the plaster and the dry pigment. How long will it take this stuff to dry anyway, as if I didn't The know. lacquer will dry Very quickly. probably in about five minutes. Work fast with it. Don't go back over your strokes unless you are a professional like me. You mean we get paid for this? Yeah. And here you see the result. Uh, it's not a finish for everyone, I'll give you that, but we have to fill in holes somewhere. As we filled in the pores here, That's and it looks true. like a big pretzel. So, try it. Hey, what you got in there, Joe? Oh, this is the crew's lunch for tomorrow. Hey, hey. Wait. Dad, I like my comedy sophisticated, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it's only a sponge. Okay. Now, look, we like got... Like your brother-in-law, but We got another finish. Here's something so quick and simple. Oh, it's been around for a real long time. As long as oil paint's been around. And that's a long time, believe oh, me. Oh, yeah. Look. Get got a wooden object. Got a bucket here. Got a wooden object. Candlestick holder. Right? That's been primed with a good oil-based primer. And let it dry and sand it. Now I take a little bit of oil paint and right onto the surface of the water. Just like painting Easter See? egg. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And it's going to float because it's Earl. Right? Now as my, it is. my friend Willie's dad always used to say to Earl. And now, wait, I'm going to take a little bit of white. This is for you, Boach. Add a little bit of white in there. Oh, and I'm going to go right in the center of that. Watch. And let's see if it works. And blow it. Now, we go down. Twirl it around. Uh-oh, here it comes. Oh, it's fat. Oh, look at that. Is that pretty or what? 
I think it looks beautiful. Oh, it drips out of your nose like that. Now, Ed, I, yes. wait, first I have to skim the top. And now I shall do I'm it. gonna take the scum off the top with the skim rag. Stop talking about my family. There you go. And now I'm gonna do a little blue. Just a little, don't pour the whole can in. Okay. Stir it up a little bit first. A little bit more, be generous. You got a big bucket there. And? And what? I'm gonna put some red, so I'll be like Superman. Okay, he's got the thumb in there. Okay. And now, now you, want, maybe you may wanna do this. What? Just swirl it around a little bit. Now I'm gonna, no, it looks fine, believe me. Okay, now I take like one. It. Oh, down, 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 go around, around, all the way, submerge it. Just like voyage to the bottom of the sea. Now pick it up. Yeah, Ooh, there you go. Look at that. Birdie. Oh. Birdie. The subtle effect here. Put it down next to this one. The subtle effect here. And this is how Fabergé got started. And the crazy house. Now, and later you varnish it or these, lacquer it. Let these dry at least, um, you know, two weeks before you lacquer them. Oh, boy. That's it. You got the magical pour fill table. And fabulous dueling nightstands. And? Fabergé candlesticks. candlesticks. This piece back here. Remember that? We, for, we didn't have enough time to do that, but we'll, we promise we'll be back on another show to do that. We meant to do it. We forgot. <laughs> we'll come back again. So goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Here, take goodbye. a look. Look, it's like Glenda the Goose.